Hi! In this video, we're going to talk about class library projects in C Sharp, why you would want to use them, how they work, and how to implement them. So if you're programming in C Sharp, why would you want to create this thing called a class library project? Let me tell you why and then show you how. So first of all, what it is. So uh, frequently it is a separate project that is used to hold what we would call utility classes. So this might be the class that handles your databases or it might handle some communications with the network. In our case we're going to create a math library that is a, a stand-in for some of those other cases. So it is a single source of code if you have a shared library among several projects. And it is also a separation of concerns so that way you don't have all your code in one class in your project, you separate it according to the layers that are in your project. So that could be the user interface layer, maybe in the middle where we have the business logic, or lower down in what we would call our data access. And so this would help along those lines. So let's take a case of where you would might use this. In this scenario, we have a brilliant programmer and this cat has a single library that is the source of truth for a company's functions. So some kind of math functions. Let's say he is a tax attorney and the, the functions are there to compute the taxes for all kinds of apps in your company such as the web app, the mobile app, or maybe a console app, or maybe a watch, I don't know, whatever they have, but they have this one library of math functions. So now we want to share this among the other employees. So we've got programmer two and programmer three, and they want to use the math functions that our brilliant programmer has designed. And so they copy them. So they, they have them emailed or on a disk or whatever, and they say, I'm gonna put these into my program. Now that works until about five minutes later when the first programmer is uh, working away and the second one has some changes. So the second programmer says, hey, you know, we're missing a function. So we're going to compute some taxes for a new state and we're going to add Alaska, for example, to our tax tables because the original function was missing that. And so we have some new math functions. The second cat, or the dog I guess it is, says, oh, I looked here and I noticed there was some errors in the California code. And so I'm just going to fix those. So what do we have now? We have three different versions of our app or our library. So the original was fine as long as the cat was using it. The second one was good until the dog fixed it. And then the third one, we have another version. So now we have total confusion in the company. Which tax table, which formulas do we use? And so we, we can't do that. That's obviously bad. So what we need instead is a reference. And so that's where these class library projects come in in Visual Studio. So we're going to allow people to make changes, but they're going to be funneled through the one source of authority. So we have the cat who still works away here, but then the, the one dog says, hey, I've got some changes I'd like to make. I want to add some new functions or maybe some better functions. And so the original source has been updated so that everybody in the team can access those. And then if we have any errors or any new functionality, we can all share it. And so now all three programmers are literally on the same page. They're working on the same source code. So they all have to share this code and now if somebody makes a change it's approved, everyone knows about it, and there's not multiple versions running around the office. So that's a great way to do it. Now here's another practical way why you would want to create a library that is called a class library. So this diagram here shows that in the .NET world you can use your code in multiple types of applications. So the top left corner is called the .NET Framework. And you can see that there are different kinds of apps that you would build in there. So there's WPF, and then there's Windows Forms, and ASP.NET. So what are those? Well, WPF and Windows Forms are desktop applications. ASP.NET is used to make web applications. But the point is that you can have the same set of code supply those types of applications with data. The blue section is the newer version of .NET called .NET Core. It works much the same way. It provides web apps and desktop apps, but in a newer version. And then Xamarin in the orange is for making mobile apps. 
Now the whole goal of .NET and Java and other programming languages like it is that we can have one set of code, one language that provides applications in multiple platforms. So this is what we're going to demonstrate here in just a minute. We're going to make a library that fits in this red block down here, the standard library, which is able to be shared among different types of projects. So we're going to create an app, a very simple app. Our case is going to be a temperature conversion class. So it's going to be a class that can convert from Fahrenheit to Celsius. So just substitute whatever your solution is, whether you need tax forms or whether you need a database or you need some other kind of solution. But you're going to have a common set of functions. Now we're going to create two different projects here and show you how to integrate two projects into one solution. So we're going to have the first version is we're going to create a class library and then a second project called a console app. And so you can see from the window here that the console app is going to look just like you would expect a black and white console. It's going to though do the functions of converting from Fahrenheit to Celsius and vice versa. Then we're going to make another version of this app and we're going to call it a WinForms app. And the user interface is obviously quite different. But you can see that the goal is the same. We're still trying to convert temperatures from one uh, system to another. So they are going to share the common class library between them. So now let's switch over to Visual Studio and I'll show you how to code this. And don't worry, I will provide the source code for this project. You can see that I have a solution here called Temp Conversion Console. So that's the console version. And we have a class called Temp Conversion Class and then a second project in this thing called Temp Conversion Console. So let's, uh, let's take a look here at the program and then run it. So you can see that we have a while loop going and we're asking some questions about the temperature. And then we have a reference here to a new class called the Conversion Calculator. And that is where the two projects intersect. We're going to use one to create the answers. So let's run the app and see what it does. I'm going to click the green arrow and let's go. So my first question comes up. It says, what temperature do you want to convert? So let's put in 100. And then it says, what temperature is the scale of 100 in? So let's say this is a Celsius or centigrade. And now it says, what do you want to convert it to? So I'll type in an F for Fahrenheit. So now the calculation says that 100 Celsius in Fahrenheit comes out to 212. I think that's correct. Let's try a zero degrees and let's do what temperature is this in? So this is zero centigrade and we are changing it to Fahrenheit. And so zero in Fahrenheit is 32. So now we have ourselves the calculations that seem to be working. I could also do Kelvin, but I'll leave that for you to play with. Now, if you want this source code, it's available on GitHub and I'll put the link in the description. So let's take a look at how we did this. We have a temperature conversion class and here is the code. So this is the code that is made up of a, a class. It's got some properties and some methods. And then we have a second solution that uses it in program. Now let's switch over to the Windows version and see how that works. Okay, so we're switching now into the Windows Forms version. You can see that I've created a form and I put some radio buttons on the screen and some controls. Let's run this and see how this one works. Okay, here's the app. It's up and running, so let's centralize it. Let's do the same thing. So I'm going to do a temperature, let's say 98 degrees Fahrenheit into Celsius. So this is like a body temperature and it comes out to be 36.6 degrees, which is accurate. Now let's say if I go to Kelvin, that's a strange one. I'm going to do uh, 90 degrees Kelvin. I have no idea what that looks like in Fahrenheit. And it turns out that it is negative 297. So Kelvin, as you might know, is a more scientific uh, temperature scale. It's 273 degrees less than the Celsius. So that's an interesting problem, but not really not practical to use for everyday life. So the point is that in my solution here, you can see I have a temperature conversion wind form solution. It has the same project called temp conversion class, and it has this class of calculating things. And then it also has the uh, newer version of the form, uh, that, the form version that shows you how to run this thing. So it is a similar application, but with two different front ends. Now I'm going to take you through the steps of how you can link these two projects together and then uh, show you how this is built. 
So the steps here is if I were to start from scratch, I would go to File and New Project. Now if I were to build this class library, I would want to choose the correct project for it. So I'm going to search for the word class up here. And you can see I have C Sharp and Windows selected. And here is a class library, .NET Standard. I think that's the right one. So let's go ahead and choose Next. Okay, so we're creating this class project. And we'll take a look at this code, but then I'm going to show you the original that I was uh, using with a temperature conversion. So this is what a class project looks like, a class library project. You can see it's called class library one, and it has one class in it. So with class one, we can either rename it or just keep it as class one. And this is where you start to put in things like properties. And you would also put in constructors and methods and anything that you already know about object oriented programming would go here. And then we would save this project as a class library project. But now I'm going to open up the project that actually was used for my temperature conversion. Let's take a look and see what that looks like. So you can see I have this thing called temperature conversion class as my project. And let's see what that looks like. And I'm not going to save the current one. Okay, so we got this project open and I'm going to look at the file called conversion calculator. So there, here's the code. It says conversion calculator is going to have a couple of properties here. It's going to have a constructor, and then you can see that there are methods such as 2 Fahrenheit and 2 Celsius, and then the third one at, at the bottom is 2 Kelvin. So it is a, it's meant to be converting numbers from one to another. You'll notice that there's not a single statement in here that says print or show button or anything that has to do with the user interface. This is completely isolated to the job of doing calculations. So it's going to return values. So we have a return a computed temperature. So this here is the code for building conversions from one system to the other. So by the way, if you're looking for a conversion calculator to uh, for a school project, this is probably not a good example to pick because it's, it's kind of programmed a little bit oddly. And your teacher will ask, why are you doing this uh, class library solution? You're probably in an introduction level course if you can't figure out how to do this conversion and you're copying somebody else's code. He's going to ask a lot of questions. So don't even try to copy this. You, I suppose the formulas are good. Yeah, you can figure out the formulas. They're just math formulas that you find in any science textbook. But now let's go into another project. So let's say I have my, I want to create a new project now and I'm going to make it a console app. So let's choose console app and uh, choose next. And then I'm going to name this thing. Uh, let's call it console app two, I suppose is good and create it. Now, how are we going to incorporate this solution? So you can see that I have console app two and I don't have the other project. So where do I get that? So I would go to solution. I'm going to right click on the top part, choose add existing project. So now I'm going to go and open the project called class library. So here it is, temp conversion class. This is the original project here that had the class in it. And now you can see over on the left side that we have console app two, and then I have a second solution, or I guess it's a second project here called my conversion calculator. So now it should be able to be seen in the other app, or can it? Let's see if it works. So I'm in this, uh, new project here and I want to make a, a reference to my other. So I'm going to try to create an object that is in the other project. It's called conversion calculator. That's its type. However, you can see that I have the red underline. So the uh, compiler is angry at me and it says, I couldn't find whatever you're trying to talk about. I'm going to offer you some solutions though. So let's see if there are any potential fixes. Let's see. It says, would you like to generate this new class? I don't really think that's what I want. I already have that class. So here's another option. It's called add a reference. So we could just click that and see how that goes. Um, before I do it automatically, let me show you a manual process that you might need. So I'm going to the console app and I'm going to right click it and I'm going to choose add. And what I want now is a project reference. So if you don't do this, it might not work. So let's go project reference. And it says, uh, which project do you want to make a reference to? So reference means I'm going to be able to see the classes and methods in other things in the other project. So now I click OK. 
And uh, I don't know where that came from. Let's close that. So we still have a red line, but now let's check the potential fixes. And you can see that there's a new option. It says using. So that wasn't there before. Using a temp conversion class, let's choose that. And now I've got regular texts. And at up here on the top on line two, it says we now are using an, a different library. So we should be able to create one of these. I think we have to have some number here. Let's try 32, and this is a Fahrenheit. I think that's what my constructor said. Now, okay, so now it's working. So we have created a successful reference to the uh, other class. Now, just to show you again how this works, let's go and make the Windows version. So I'm going to choose a Windows Forms app this time, and let's choose Next. And let's call this Windows Apps Form 2, I guess, and choose Create. And I don't care about the previous one. All right, so here's the Windows Forms. Now, if you want, you can go get the source code for this and put all the little buttons on there. But I'll skip that part. I'll let you uh, go ahead and do that on your own. Now, if I wanted to make the reference here, can I add the class library for my other project? Go ahead and try it. Or you can follow with me. So I'm going to the solution and choose right click. I'm going to add an existing solution. Let's see, where am I looking for? So I'm looking for an existing project. And now I'm going to choose the same class folder and click OK. And now I have two projects in one solution. So let's go make the reference again. I'm going to right click, choose add and make a reference and it says you want to use this other project here that's what we want click OK so now if I were to do something like put a button on here and then let's go program the button I'll double click it I should be able to add a reference to this thing so let's do another conversion calculator and let's see it doesn't recognize it calculator and we'll call it calc So now I'm starting to program the conversion calculator and let's go check to see if we can import it. It says yes, you can use that other class. Perfect. So now I have the ability to reference the calculator conversion uh, logic in my Windows Forms app. So just in case you're curious of how this was programmed, let's take a look at some of the details. I'm going to double click the OK button on the real source code and see what that looks like. So you can see that in this button I have a reference to a conversion, uh, conversion calculator. And then further on down when I click the OK button, I'm going to check to see uh, which kind of radio button was checked. And I'm going to assign a, a single character, FC or K, to the from temperature and the to temperature. And then I'm going to use a switch statement depending on which uh, second radio button was checked. And then when we're done, we're going to set the label of the answer to the correct conversion. And so there you go. That's the Windows Forms version. But the main point here is that we have two different projects inside of one solution. So now, just to recap, what were we trying to do? We were trying to have a separate project that would hold utility classes. Does that make sense now? We have a function that can, can do conversions from one temperature to the other. That's our utility. The utility doesn't print anything, it doesn't display anything, it just calculates the answer that you need. And we have a single source of code. So now if I were to change the conversion formula, both of the applications that I created would reflect that change. So I might have a slight uh, error in one of the formulas. Also, we can have a separation of concerns. So now you can see that we have a class whose job it is to find the answer the user interface does not care about how it gets the answer it just gets the answer from the other class so a separation of concerns is a great way to start building your applications modularly so that way you don't do all of your coding in one place so think of an enterprise application it gets very complex and you want to make sure that your separation of concerns gets very granular you might have thousands of different classes in a, in a big project because each class has its own job to do and you don't want to make too much spaghetti code and make your uh, maintenance a nightmare. So this is why you would use a class library project 
in uh, b building it in Visual Studio, or if you had other kinds of languages, you would have the same principles that would apply. So by the way, you're welcome to join me in class. I'm a professor of computer science and software development at Grand Canyon University. If you subscribe, you will get updated on regular lessons and new tutorials for how to become a software developer. So welcome aboard.